Now, where we run into issues is with tenants. Tenants versus unit owners. So in a common interest community or an HOA, everybody has paid this large sum of money to live there. And typically, not always, but typically, it means that they have a vested interest in keeping the place uh, presentable, making sure the environment there is a nice neighborhood or neighborly friendly environment. Um, and they really take pride and care in you know, the upkeep of the community. Many times we run into issues are investor owners who look at buying a condo as like a hands-off, you know, passive income opportunity. They just buy the condo, they put a tenant in and they don't have to worry about it. And that's not really the case. Um, what we find is that tenants have a much lower interest, personal interest in maintaining the upkeep of the community, um, making sure that you know, they have good relationships with their neighbors because by and large, tenants are generally transient, right? They're living there for a few months, a few years, you know, whatever the case is, and then they're gonna move on to something else. And they don't have any ownership. They're paying, you know, their however much money a month to live there, and that's it. And the unit owners are just collecting that, that check. And ultimately, the, the contractual obligations is between the HOA, the Homeowners Association, and the unit owners. And the unit owner has a separate contractual obligation to the tenant. So they have a lease agreement in place and really the tenant is responsible to the unit owner and vice versa. And then the unit owner is responsible to the HOA. And if the tenant goes and you know, creates a noise disturbance or you know, leaves trash where they shouldn't or whatever the case is, the HOA has no real recourse against the tenant most of the time what they're able to do is you know, call the unit owner in for a hearing and find the unit owner. And the unit owner gets upset because you know, they, they're not the ones who did that. It doesn't matter. Everything that goes on at that unit is ultimately the unit owner's responsibility. And the HOA has no legal obligation to the tenant other than to maintain the utilities on, um, you know, make sure that there's you know, water and a relatively safe environment and, and all this stuff, but really, um, the tenant should not be communicating with the HOA or management really for any reason. Um, all communication should go between the tenant and the unit owner and then the unit owner and the HOA. Obviously, this extra step or this extra level of separation can create conflicts when you have a building or a complex full of unit owners who've paid a lot of money to live in a certain area and then you have uh, a few tenants who are just kind of there temporarily um, you know, for a year or two and they feel like you know it's their right to do whatever they want. And you know that, that can create a problematic environment. And so we try to discourage um, investor owners in our complexes. Uh, we have a few that are really good that they own one or two or three units and they're very hands-on and they're on site all the time and they've got great tenants and, and we're happy to work with them. But the more investor owners you get in a complex, the lower the quality of life becomes in that complex because you have less and less people who are vested in the community, less and less people who have an ownership in the community, and more people are just kind of there temporarily doing what they want. So we discourage it as well for other reasons. The higher ratio of investor owners or tenants rented units in an HOA, the harder it's going to get be to get FHA financing, FHA approval. Um, some mortgage, mortgage companies will not lend uh, to properties in HOAs that have too high of a ratio of investor owners to owner occupants. And that's just because it's common knowledge that the higher the ratio of investor owners, um, usually the, the worse the environment becomes in, in an HOA. Whereas in an apartment complex, you have a management company, it's what they do that you pay usually a much higher price for your unit to live there and the management company takes care of everything and they decide who gets to stay who gets to leave they have leases with all the residents and are responsible solely to them and are also responsible for maintaining the complex in its entirety uh, whereas in an hoa it's divided between all the unit owners and it's more democratic of a process